<laughs> well, the modest Ryzen 3 3100 and the 3300X are out very soon. Available May 2020. And, uh... <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay, well, let's talk about the B550 chipset. It's like, wait, no, that's not what I want to talk about. The B550 chipset, we'll just get that out of the way. It's a new chipset, kinda. It's uh, PCI Express 4. It's going to offer PCI Express 4 lanes directly from the CPU. The motherboards that implement the B550 chipset also implement PCI Express 4 lanes from the CPU. The chipset link is, however, PCI Express 3.0 by 4. And the chipset offers PCI Express 3.0 lanes. Four PCI Express 3.0 lanes, well, up to six, and up to six SATA ports. Well, it's got four SATA ports, but you can use uh, two lanes, either as two more PCIe lanes or two more SATA lanes. It's up to the board implementer. The suggested end user pricing for B550 motherboards starts at about $100. We have seen B450 motherboards under that price already. And those are going to be perfectly compelling motherboards for the new Ryzen 3 CPUs, assuming that you have BIOS support. AMD's run into a little bit of a problem here, or I should say board partners have run into a little bit of a problem here, because AM4, you know, uh, has really expanded the number of CPUs that it supports. You've got three generations of Ryzen, and you mix in Ryzen plus Vega, it's a whole other family of CPUs. It turns out that it's really tough to fit microcode and software for initializing all the different kinds of CPUs. So even though, you, even though you have socket compatibility, there are some practical limitations because it's down to, you know, what will fit in the BIOS. So when you're building a machine, you need to double check compatibility, double check that your motherboard has had a recently updated BIOS. But yeah, okay, yeah, the maniacal laughter. Back to the maniacal laughter. Stay on topic. So these CPUs are really nice. $100 for the Ryzen uh, 3 3100 and about $130, $120. If you've been following Level 1 for a while or you stay on top of the tech scene, like the deal was the Ryzen 1600 AF because it wasn't really a 1600. It was a newer process node. And so even though it was labeled first gen Ryzen, it really wasn't. But it was really just a, a, a sort of a, a marketing hack by AMD to sort of slot in a processor at about the $85 mark. I think that the 3100 will supplant the 1600 at about $99. I mean, yeah, it's about $15 more expensive, but, you know, give it a month or two or three. And the difference here, like, so when we did the, like, the Ryzen plus Vega, that's the other thing in the back of my mind. It's like the Ryzen 3 oh, plus Vega and the Ryzen 5 plus Vega. It was like, wow, the $99 processor there, the Ryzen 3, was a really compelling value. AMD has been a lot more careful this time to give you a reason to pay the extra 20 bucks for the Ryzen 3 3300X. It's, they're both four cores, eight threads. The 3100 is 3.9 gigahertz max, you know, turbo boost. 4.3 gigahertz for the 3300X, so 400 megahertz more, you know, at the, the basically the default configuration. Both of them do include the Wraith Stealth cooler right in the box, which is a reasonable cooler for these CPUs. You don't need to buy an aftermarket CPU cooler, especially for a budget system, definitely. I wouldn't recommend a, uh, like, get a better AM4 CPU if you're going to buy an aftermarket cooler. Like, that's just, uh, four cores, eight threads. So, four cores, eight threads works really well for a lot of common tasks. Like, your grandma, your mom, general office workers, they mostly don't need more than a Ryzen 3. I mean, the Ryzen 3 is basically the same performance level. The 3300X out of the box is pretty much at parity with the i7-7700K. Now, granted, the 7700K did launch a while ago, but that processor launched at like $450, something like that, and this is $130. It's not been that long ago. It's like three years. That is the bottom falling out of pricing. That is incredible. Four cores, eight threads. They're really comparable. They really are similar in a lot of ways. We did a lot of testing with games and productivity apps uh, for a home theater machine or something like that where you're going to do an add-in graphics card where having a chip with integrated graphics maybe doesn't make sense because you want something a little bit more powerful. Uh, Ryzen, that's a, I mean, it's pretty good. 
a lot of games don't really work super well with uh, more than four cores. Um, I mean, there are a few games, but a lot of games are really uh, not so much. So we did testing. We did testing with the 3700X, the 3100, and the 3300X. And we tested with the 2070 Super and with the 5700 XT. Now these, the 2070 Super and the 5700 XT, I think are basically at the top end for GPU that you would get for a build like this. You're probably going to be spending less on your GPU. I'd say probably like the one to three hundred dollar range um, for your GPU, and probably more than a hundred dollars, like 150 on up, because reasons. So like 200, 250 dollars is kind of the sweet spot for the four core, eight thread platform, but 2070 Super, it's a little more expensive than that. 5700 XT, a little more expensive than that. But that gives us a breakdown of how these CPUs are going to perform. And spoiler alert, for most games, there really wasn't a lot of difference, even between, you know, from the 3900X to the 3700X to the 3300 to the, or 3300X to the 3100. There were a few games where that's a notable exception. First up, here is our test system configuration on screen, and we are using faster-ish memory. I am going to test this with some slower memory that's probably going to be a different video. At 1080p, the 3700X, the 3300X, and the 3100X were basically the same speed in Borderlands 3. I mean, the 0.1% lows with the 3700X were quite a bit better at 72 versus, say, 39 to 44 between the 3300X and the 3100X, but the average frame rate was about 100 FPS, give or take, with the 2070 Super, for the particular graphic settings that we had in Borderlands 3. Basically follows suit with, with Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal does seem to take advantage of more compute horsepower, so the 3300X is sort of the sweet spot for gaming. And that's going to be kind of a pattern here. And we'll talk about why that is in just a minute, because it's not it's not like it's just a little bit faster. The CPU topology is actually a little different, but I'm spoiling things. We're getting off track. Far Cry 5. Far Cry 5 was one of the ones where uh, the performance really started to fall off a bit when you go from a 3700X to the 3100. Far Cry 5 is always a weird game. It's always weird to benchmark. It's always acting a little funny, depending on whatever it is that you're doing with it. And so it's about 80, uh, the 3100 is about 87% of the speed of a 3700, and the 3300X is about 94% of the speed. That's a 1080p, again, with the 2070 Super. Final Fantasy XIV is basically the same, same speed across the board. It's like 91% as fast on the 3100. Uh, not really anything special to write home about, which tells me that Final Fantasy XIV is not really super multi-core optimized, but hey, that's fine. At 1080p, we're still well over 120 FPS average across all three CPUs. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is another interesting one. 3700X is an uh, average FPS of 124, but our 0.1% lows is about 32 FPS versus 26 FPS on the 3300X and an average frame rate of 119. That's a little bit of a reduction, but it's not severe. However, the 3100, uh, it is seem to bottleneck a little bit. We dropped from 32 FPS on our 3700X on our 0.1% lows to just 17 FPS, and our average drops from 124 to 103. So the performance on the 3100 is a little more lacking. Feeling, feeling that CPU bottleneck at 1080p a little bit more on Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Tom Clancy's Wildlands benefits a little bit from the 3700X. It's a, you know, we're talking about 138 FPS versus 127, but I don't think the cost differential there makes it worth it. But moving from the 3100 to the 3300X, you'll move from 113 FPS to 127 FPS. But you're not buying a 2070 Super for 1080p gaming, are you? I mean, maybe if you've got a high refresh rate monitor. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Let's move up to 1440p and see how things shake out there. Borderlands 3 at 1440p, uh, it's basically 69 FPS average. Uh, figures Borderlands 3 would be 69 FPS average across all three CPUs, wouldn't it? I mean, that just that just goes without saying. Yes, I'm I'm 12. What about Far Cry 5? Well, it's a, the picture here is a little better. It's a, the difference between 107 FPS with the 3700X to just 96 FPS with the 3100. And so this would seem to be the opposite conclusion of what I was saying before. I mean, we're moving a little bit more into the 2070 Super. Maybe not as a bottleneck, because, I mean, this is still over 100 FPS, worst case scenario, in terms of our averages. Well, 96 FPS in the case of the 3100, but you, you get my drift. So, this is sort of an interesting situation with Far Cry 5, because at 1440p, the CPU matters a bit less. 
With Final Fantasy XIV at 1440p, it's basically a wash. The 1% and the 0.1% lows are quite a bit worse with the 3100, but the average frame rate is about 100 FPS across the board. It's certainly within margin of error. Again, at 1440p, the average frame rate, there's not really a huge difference here. 103 FPS to 94 FPS between the 3700X and the 3100X. Tom Clancy's Wildlands is a straight 94 FPS average across all three CPUs. However, our 0.1% lows are 13 and 14 FPS on the 3100 and the 3300X. Playing Tom Clancy's Wildlands, you capture something that's not really here in the numbers, and that is, it is a much smoother experience on the 3700X with Tom Clancy's Wildlands, especially at 1440p, than with the 3100 and the 3300X. It just, I guess Tom Clancy's Wildlands is right on the edge, or Windows is just going bananas in the background doing something, and if you can quiet it down, then the game lives pretty happily on four cores. But as soon as Windows starts doing something, your, your frame rate tanks. I did fiddle with that a little bit, but I couldn't really nail down what was going on in the background. Let's switch things up. Swap that 2070 Super for a 5700 XT. This is the Azrock Tai Chi. Now something weird is going on with Borderlands, but it's repeatable. Borderlands 3, our 0.1% lows were about 17 FPS with the 3700X and our average frame rate was 91. Multiple DDU runs, multiple clearing the driver, multiple everything, the 5700 XT was acting really weird with the 3700X. Swap CPUs for the 3300X, and even before I DDU'd or anything, 113 FPS average, 33% 0.1% lows. Don't know what was going on there. Something weird. But again, Borderlands, <laughs> that anomaly aside, Borderlands performance was basically the same with all three CPUs. Subjectively playing the game, even though it was in like broken mode on the 3700X, I couldn't really tell a difference. Like it was basically fine. So. I don't know. I don't know if it was just the tool was malfunctioning, but I don't know. We retested it and weirdness. I don't know. We might retest it again. Just just for giggles. Testing Far Cry 5 at 1080p with the Tai Chi, of course. 112 to 113 FPS average between the 3700X and the 3300X. Frame rate tanks a little bit to 96 FPS, but uh, and our 0.1% lows move from 83 in our best case scenario to 67. In our worst case scenario, it's not too bad. It, it seems to be right on that edge with four cores. We look at Final Fantasy XIV again. It's basically 117, 118 FPS across the board. But again, the 3700X was acting a little weird, a little, a little odd, because my 0.1% lows were six on Final Fantasy XIV. So again, repeatable. Don't know what's going on there. I did just update the BIOS on this board, so hopefully they don't. It's not, it's not something with that. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Shadow of the Tomb Raider and a Tai Chi 5700 XT doesn't seem to suffer as much as NVIDIA does. This is weird. This may warrant further investigation. 133 FPS on the 3700X to, nine, or to 114 FPS on the 3100. That is doing better than Team Green in terms of maintaining a high average frame rate. However, our 0.1% lows basically followed the pattern and dropped down to about 18 FPS on our lowly 3100. While our 3300X was able to maintain about 40 FPS for the 0.1% lows. Tom Clancy's Wildlands with the 3100X and the 5700 really seemed to struggle. So this is kind of the opposite of Borderlands 3. Not sure what's going on with that, but the 3100 0.1% lows was only 8 FPS. And the game kind of stuttered a lot when you were just playing it and moving it around. And again, was Windows just in the background doing something insane? But it was repeatable, so I don't know. Switching it up to 1440p with the Tai Chi, Borderlands 3, basically the same performance across all three CPUs. Oddly, technically the average was a little higher with the 3300X versus the 3700X, but the 3100X was still able to maintain about 65 FPS average, and our 0.1% lows were, were actually a little bit better measured on these runs. So there's kind of a lot of variability with Borderlands 3, but not too bad. Basically the same experience across the board. Far Cry 5. It's about 100 FPS across the board for all three of these, 104 to 91. It is a little bit of a reduction with the 3100, as you would expect, but nothing really super weird there. Final Fantasy XIV was basically about 85 FPS across the board with our 0.1% lows having a little bit more variability, but again, there's no nothing special here. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 99 FPS to 96 FPS. Our 0.1% lows are basically the same across all three of these, so I think we're entering into 
this is basically the sweet spot of the GPU for the Tai Chi 5700 XT. But more importantly, even our low end 3100 is able to keep that fed in terms of you know keeping our frame rate close to 100 ish. Tom Clancy's Wildlands at 1440p. Again, I don't know. The 0.1% lows were 35 on Tom Clancy's Wildlands, but actually playing it, that wasn't my perception. So, driver issues? I don't know. But overall, 87 FPS for the 3700X, $130 CPU at 1440p? That's crazy. Now, you look at the game results, and you're saying, this seems like an awful lot of difference for just 400 megahertz between the 3300X and a 3100. And you would be right. It turns out the internal topology of the CPUs is a little different between the two CPUs. So the 3100 is two cores active in two CCXs on a single CCD. So think about the AMD topology. They've got eight cores on a CCD and the CCD, the piece of the single piece of silicon is broken into two groups of four processors. So one processor has four cores enabled in one group, and the other processor, the 3100, has two cores in two groups enabled. Now they both have 16 megs of cache, so this is really gives AMD a binning opportunity because they can use some of the dies that have a lot of defective cache, I guess, uh, on the 3100, like some like oh it's got 16 megs of cache, but we can't use all those. $100, you know, you can still use the silicon. But for gaming and stuff, the 3300X having everything just in one uh, compute complex, all the four cores are together, then they share the 16 megs of cache, and for things that are less than four threads, you get the benefit of that enormous 16 meg cache. For things that are more than four threads, you get the benefit of, this was a lot of fun. I mean, these are, I like working on 64 core and 32 core systems, and because it's mind blowing, but this is just as revolutionary, but at the low end of the market, because it has dramatically moved the amount of compute per dollar that you have access to. And for students and, you know, people that are excited about computers and that don't want to spend a ton of money on a computer, but they sort of want to get their feet wet, maybe do a build, you know, relatively low risk is like, oh, I accidentally sat on the processor and have crushed it. Now well, you lost a hundred dollars, not, you know, a thousand dollars or seven hundred fifty dollars or seventeen hundred dollars or whatever it is if that's your first time building a machine Ryzen 3 is a great it's a <laughs> Ryzen 3 is your gateway drug into the world of awesome computing I'm one of this is level one I'm signing out and I'll see you later